In this video, we're going to do an example using thermal circuits and all three modes of radiation heat transfer that we introduced in this modeling. I'm going to do this in a Jupyter Notebook. We're going to use Jupyter Notebooks a whole bunch in this course. And while many of you have used them in previous courses, I'll try and show you everything you need to know as we go along in using these notebooks. They're a wonderful way to do your problems, even if it's just replacing a simple calculator. A lot of the problems we'll be doing, whether it's on OnQ or on a system like Wiley Plus, have algorithmic type questions where the variables change each time you do the questions. If you do your problems in a notebook like this, it's very, very easy just to change the values and see uh, what, how the answer changes when you do a new sample of the question. So it's a very good practice to get into, even just to use the notebook to replace a calculator. But of course you can also take notes in there as well as do your calculations and explain what you're doing so that you, when you look at it in the future, you'll remember what it is that you're doing. I'll use that to explain things as we go along and, and some of the notes that I'll provide in the course will be in Jupyter Notebooks as well. I'll also distribute those as PDF files so that you can uh, look at them without putting it in Jupyter. And so this will be our first example with Jupyter and it shows you of course we're in Mech 346 right now and I can put headings in there and put text to explain what's going on. I put this at the top of most of my notebooks uh, and it's just setting up some of the plotting environment. Of course we use a library called NumPy in order to do some of the vector math um, and we use matplotlib to make some really really nice plots. And so this is just setting it up and I like to make the fonts bigger so that it's easier to see when we make graphs. So if we happen to make graphs these are just things that are setting the defaults. So I'll just cut and paste this at the top of every notebook that we're doing. Uh, maybe even sometimes when I'm not even using those features but uh, it's just a habit. Okay so the example we're going to look at today is a composite wall and we're going to make use of those thermal, thermal, thermal circuits in order to solve the heat transfer through a composite wall. So this composite wall is a one-dimensional system and we have a very simple wall made out of two sheets of plywood shown in brown here and we have uh, insulation in, inside which is shown as pink much like our fiberglass pink insulation. Uh, we're told that the temperature inside the on the inside of the wall is Tn and there's a convection coefficient of Hn uh, because of a slight movement of, of air inside the home here. On the outside we're at a temperature T out and we have a different convection coefficient uh, H out due to the wind conditions on the outside and there's a clue that we want to think about radiation as well because this plywood is painted and I've given you the emissivity of the paint on that outer wall. We have the thicknesses of each of these three materials the plywood is two centimeters and the insulation is five centimeters. So here's the given data with the temperature in at 20 degrees, the temperature out at 2 degrees, uh, the convection coefficient on the inside at 3 watts per meter squared Kelvin, on the outside 6 watts per meter squ squared Kelvin, and the conductivities of the two materials 0.1 watts per meter Kelvin for the plywood and something a little bit more than air at 0 0.038 watts per meter Kelvin for the, fire, for the insulation and that makes sense that it's a little bit more than air because there's probably, it's, it may be a fiberglass insulation which is a light material that's trying to trap a whole bunch of air and keep it from moving and it's really the air that's giving you that insulation value and what's holding it actually has a bit of a higher conductivity making the overall system a little bit higher than that of air. And the emissivity of paint at 0.9. So what we're going to do is calculate the heat loss through the wall and the temperature on the inner and outer surface of the wall assuming no radiation heat transfer and then we're going to check if radiation is important in this problem. We're going to add two supplementary problems to that. Uh, supplementary C will be to look at the heat transfer of the wall including radiation heat transfer and supplementary D use those plotting features in Jupiter to plot the heat transfer through the wall without radiation uh, for insulation thicknesses ranging from 1 to 20 centimeters. So here I'm just setting up my variables and again this is much better than using a calculator. I can just put in words much like I have in my problem description. H on the inside for the convection coefficient, H on the outside, the temperatures, the thicknesses, the conductivities and the um, <coughs> emissivity of the paint. The area of the wall I'll set to 1 and by doing that it means uh, even if I multiply by 1 we're really calculating the heat flux instead of the heat rate because our area is 1 um, <coughs> and so we could call it a heat rate for a wall of 1 meter squared or we could call it the heat flux in watts per meter squared. Okay, so first we're going to assume that radiation is negligible. We'll pretend it's not there for the first part, that's what we're asked to do in the question. And so I want to represent this system by my thermal 
resistance network. Now I have five resistors in this system and they're all in series. We have the temperature of the inside going through a convection process. So there is air moving on the inside of the house resulting in uh, flow distribution across here which changes the way that heat is removed from this from the inner from the inner room into this sheet of plywood and then of course it's a one-dimensional system so all the energy that moves into this wall is going to pass through each of these lines in series and out to the outside so my first resistance is that convection process on the inside which I know about because I'm given a convection coefficient each in my second resistance is due to this two centimeter piece of plywood and that's going to be a conduction resistance we're going to have a conduction resistance through the fiberglass insulation at R3 we're going to hit the plywood again at R4 at a conduction resistance and finally there's a convection process on the outside so we'll have a convection resistance there connecting our final outside temperature as given in the problem Can use the relations from the previous video. The convection resistance is 1 over HA. So on the inside, that'll be H in times area. And on the outside, it's 1 over H out times A. The conduction resistance is the thickness over the conductivity times the area. And so R2 is the thickness of the plywood over the conductivity of the plywood times that area, which is the same through this entire one dimensional system. And that's identical to the resistance on the identical piece of plywood on the outside. So I could actually have combined those into one and said it was two times the thickness. I will leave it this way though. And then the insulation conduction where it's the same thing except we're using the thickness of the insulation over the conductivity of the, of the insulation. And of course, using our thermal resistance network, the total heat transfer that we're going to get through there Q is given by the temperature on the inside minus the temperature of the outside over that total resistance. Since these resistors are in series, the total resistance is simply the sum of all of these resistors. So we'll just calculate them here, typing in the equations for what I have written up here for each one of these resistors, R1 through R5, and then I'll calculate the total by summing up each one of those and simply calculate Q according to this equation right here, T in minus T out over R total. And I can print that out so that we can see the answer. And we see that the heat rate through the wall in this case is 8.1235. I do not need anywhere near this precision and I probably should uh, cut it down. So let's stop that at 8.12 uh, watts per meter squared. In fact, we probably should stop it at 8.1 given the number of significant digits that were given in the, in, in the problem. So 8.1 watts per meter squared. Now if I had a wall of any size, I could multiply by the area and see what that heat rate, heat rate is for that wall, wall of that finite um, area. Now, because the, heat, the resistances are in series, this Q passes through each and every one of these resistors. And that means that we can look at any one of these resistors or any combination of these resistors together. If I wanted to know the temperature at this point here, I could simply rewrite my equation to say, that the, that same Q that passes through each and every one of those has to be equal to Tn minus the temperature at this point over the total resistance between these two or the sum of resistors R1 and R2. I want to know the inner surface temperature. And in order to calculate the inner surface temperature, I'm going to look just at the first resistor. And I'll write my expression that says Q is equal to Tn minus the temperature that I wish to solve for here, T surface in I'll call it, divided by R1. That's the only resistor between these two points. I've solved already for Q, and so the only thing I don't know in this equation is T surf in. Well, I can easily solve for that, and very easily calculate it, and I see that the inner surface temperature is 17.3 degrees centigrade. Now remember, we could have worked either in centigrade or Kelvin in this problem, and of course we're given the temperatures in Celsius, so it's convenient to keep working in Celsius, and that's because everything we've done so far is related to a difference in temperatures. As soon as we're not talking about a difference in temperatures, we're going to have to work in Kelvin. And in order to calculate the outer surface temperature, we simply look at the last resistor in the series, so T surface out minus T out over resistor 5. Will give us, it is that same Q that goes through each and every one of those resistors, and so similarly we can calculate T surface out to be 3.4 degrees centigrade. As expected, there's a fairly noticeable drop in the temperature between 
um, the inside and the surface of the wall and you probably notice that in your home in the winter when you touch the wall you can feel that the walls are cooler. There is of course a temperature drop through the convection process between the wall and the room itself. In some cases if the insulation in the wall or in a window is not so good, is not adequate, then you can get frost occurring on those windows. If this temperature gets down below zero, the water that condenses is going to freeze. Perhaps you see that on some of your windows as well, and we'll talk about that in Module 3 of the course.